Hello everyone, welcome back to Healthcare Engineering YouTube channel. This is Gaston, admin of the Healthcare Engineering team. We would like to welcome you all to another wonderful and knowledgeable interview series. Rather than talking it as an interview series, we would like to call it as a knowledge sharing session where the experts from the industry share about their knowledge and skills with the students and freshers from our channel. In this interview series, we are going to interview Mr. Rahil. Well, he is a biomedical engineer and a healthcare IT professional. For the viewers convenient, we are going to release this entire interview into four parts. So this will be the first part. In this first part, we are going to ask engineer Rahil about how his education or our education supports us to perform well in the healthcare industry. And he is going to explain who is a healthcare IT professional and what are his duties. Apart from working in the healthcare IT sector, he talks about what is medical coding and what is medical billing and what happens over there. He shares all his experiences and the skills with us in this part. I would like to request you all to subscribe our Healthcare Engineering YouTube channel to show us your support. So in future we will bring several other interview sessions from many healthcare experts like him. We are going to release part 2, 3 and 4 in next few days. Please stay tuned with us to watch all the parts and keep update yourself about the healthcare IT sectors. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Rahil, for accepting our offer to give an interview. Uh, on behalf of the healthcare engineering team, uh, I'm welcoming you to for this interview session. And a huge thank you for allocating some time uh, in between your heavy schedule. Thank you so much and welcome to the healthcare engineering team's interview session. Okay, uh, let's get into the topic without further ado. Uh, could you explain uh, me about yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is Rahil and I am basically okay. a biomedical engineer. It's, uh, I completed my biomedical engineering in 2014 and after that uh, I have done um, post-graduation uh, PGDM in International Business Management and PGDM really? in Sales and Marketing. Yes. So okay. my initial uh, education started with biomedical engineering. That is where I think uh, like I, I stepped forward. So I think uh, that is that is it, and we will be like uh, sharing my experience. I'll share my experience of uh, like how how different uh, milestones uh, help me uh, to to reach wherever we are, wherever I am up to up to now. That is the experience sharing session that we will be having today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The main uh, concept of having such kind of uh, online interview sessions are just we need to get the uh, skills and experience from expertise like you. So this will be our second interview session. Um, the main aim of this interview session is just getting the uh, experience and skills from the skilled people like you and sharing among the students and those who are entering the healthcare sector as a fresher, right? So they will get an idea about how they have to perform well and what are the things they need to focus in order to perform well right so these are the concepts why we are doing these sessions right. thank you so much um, okay uh, so your education background is biomedical engineering itself right okay so apart from your bachelor's uh, did you do any kind of a postgraduate studies yeah uh, as i said i completed my bachelor's in biomedical engineering in 2014 and okay. then, uh, then after I did uh, two EGDM, one is in the international two postgraduate studies, right? Yeah, uh, one is in international business management, and uh, okay. one is in de in diploma in postgraduate diploma in sales and marketing. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, uh, uh, Rahil, uh, could you please uh, elaborate that um, how your education helps you or supports you to perform well or to how it, 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 it acts you as an additional benefit to perform well in the industry. Yeah, so uh, what I learned in, in graduation, in my biomedical engineering, it, it's a mixture of uh, many interdisciplinary like branches altogether. So, yes, correct. Yeah, so it's not uh, like uh, we also know a little about uh, uh, like uh, we know a little about mechanical engineering, a little about yes, yes. the yes. fundamental things we know, yeah, right? the because it's uh, interdisciplinary. Even IT as well. So yes. it uh, like it evolves you uh, as you grow in in your curriculum of graduation. And I think 
uh, that also broadens your horizon of uh, like uh, looking at things uh, which which uh, like all not not all uh, like engineers will be able to see because uh, we are slightly different considering the the like a combination of healthcare and technology that uh, like we we are we are being learned in our our uh, like graduation year so i think uh, that has helped me and it has also helped my horizon to expand so i think uh, that is also a good place to start mm -hmm. okay okay so uh akil uh can you say an idea about so since you are from the biomedical uh, engineering background i mean from basic from the bachelors mm -hmm. there are some people who are from the other faculties right like uh, telecommunication or the mechanical or from mm -hmm. even from electrical right mm -hmm. so uh, do they need to develop any kind of special skills in order to perform well in biomedical engineering sector yeah uh it's like it's doable not uh, like not nothing special that we are doing here but here uh, the the learning that comes during the graduation year or in specifically for life science part of the engineering that we are doing for uh, in the biomedical engineering i think uh, that that uh, keeps us apart from the other engineering branches so life sciences i think uh, like the core at which uh, like we differ from other uh, other all the branches of engineering so i think uh, those who are who are interested in uh, medical technology or life science based uh, engineering uh, work uh, after their graduation i think they should go for uh, biomedical engineering and uh, once once they are there uh, i think uh, not to focus on core engineering concept i think uh, if if we also focus on like let us say the life science part of engineering i think that will be a beneficiary for the existing students those who are currently pursuing biomedical engineering mm -hmm. okay okay so that's your idea about that right okay um okay so apart from your uh, studies have you done any kind of researches while your bachelor's or maybe in your post graduate studies did you do any kind of researches related to the uh, field as a part of is a part of our curriculum of uh, like four years of engineering uh, our last year project was of ultrasonic sterilizer and uh, we did uh, uh, we did perform a good amount of research activities during our last year of project that is where i think uh, that is the initial days in which uh, we started it and uh, after after my graduation uh, the first job that i held was also under, as a research executive so and i did it for around 1 1 to 1.5 years so i think uh, that has also helped me to like explore the industry and explore the different ways a biomedical engineer can put his own career forward so it's not only about uh, like uh, being in hospital or not only about uh, like medical coding or medical billing but it's not only about uh, marketing and sales and services so these are few like a uh, huge uh, hugely popular or usually famous uh, career options after biomedical engineers are out but these are not the only ones so that is what i learned uh, in in my research days uh, in till in 2013 14 or so so i think uh, i think uh, that has also impacted good good in uh, like uh, for shaping my career forward nice nice okay okay uh could you please explain me about your current role what you are doing uh, as a healthcare it professionalist uh, in the industry now yeah uh, currently we are involved in uh, hospital software and uh, to specifically uh, tell about uh, we are involved in patient emr software so electronic uh, medical yeah, records right? uh, emr stands for electronic medical records and our specialization is uh, mainly on the customized software for uh, as a part so currently like uh, at least in india we have we do not have a centralized uh, like database of all the patients and many countries mm -hmm. across the world have many still it's still growing so many do not have as well so uh, but we keep, have the same problem in the country still we have all used the conventional ways yeah. to keep the records thank you, thank you. so we are there are many hospitals many clinics uh, many physicians or general practitioners those who are using the uh, like the conventional methods or diary keeping or not keeping or even um, like uh, there are few who are also doing a good amount of 
uh, like uh, software integration with uh, to for their operations management so i think uh, uh, it still has a good uh, good amount of opportunity for all the healthcare it professionals to explore and uh, that is where uh, like currently uh, uh, i am focused to and uh, still it's growing so uh, at least in india we do not have all like uh, at least we do not have a centralized repository of all the patient information so if a patient go from hospital a to hospital b then uh, his his history, historical data will not be available to hospital b so that is uh, like he has to start a fresh so i yes. think uh, and it's a, it's critically needed technology has already evolved but hospital it uh, like it's still in the emerging state so i think it's the right place to be and uh, that is where uh, uh, i am currently working on Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So when when we have the integrated system in between all the hospitals, so then the patient can save a lot of time. Even the doctors can save a lot of time, right? Rather than bringing yeah, all the documents here and there, everything must be. And, uh, also, it will help the decision making of uh, the doctor for a better treatment of the patient. So if he knows uh, the the past past diagnosis history of one particular patient, even. if patient what got to tell him but uh, he can see it at your at his own uh, like uh, own pc or own and at his own screen that uh, this patient has undergone so and so in his past 10 years or so then he he will be at a better position to uh, give a efficient um, like a prescription for that patient so i think uh, data is uh, a very critically uh, challenging uh, like component right now and we we already have data so it's it's good to have the data organized so that we can use it for future uh, like uh, better efficient decision making mm-hmm. no oh, i see okay okay i understand so currently uh, you are working uh, so you, your job is uh, engaged with the healthcare it sector right right okay. right so okay apart from that could you please elaborate because uh, i've read in an article that uh, there are some people are converting the diseases name into a medical coding part and they send into the uh, developed countries and they get back the reports from the developed countries could you could you please have, uh, tell me talk about that so there are two uh, basic main components one is uh, medical coding and one is medical billing so Uh, there are n number of companies uh, those who are currently working in medical coding and medical billing so, that's medical coding right yeah and as well as medical billing so these are two major components and under which uh, like uh, the companies are working upon so they basically uh, bifurcate or work upon uh, the formatting the prescribed data into I- into icd 10 nomenclature so that mm-hmm. the internationally standard recognized the uh, like nomenclature given to disease and their components so we they basically like uh, keep segregate the data in a meaningful way so that uh, like the hospital can again submit it forward uh, to their national accreditation bodies so that uh, like they have a end to end compliance of how they are operating so i think uh, that is very well uh, critically managed right now so all the patients data with the like uh, in many countries in particularly in us and canada they are outsourcing it to majority of asia based uh, companies those who are mm-hmm. doing their medical transcriptions and uh, in, in submitting them the data in their prescribed uh, like format so that they they can go ahead with uh, like uh, submitting it the same uh, to their national accreditation body the icd 10 or icd 11 nomenclatures uh, as of uh, now that is how the structure of medical coding and billing is Mm-hmm. so as you said there are more and more opportunities are available in these uh, sections right so right. still since we are the developing countries there are possibilities to develop these things in our own yeah, regions it, it's uh, more of a manpower requirement and, uh, here uh, we have like petis in india uh, or throughout the asia we have a skilled manpower uh, and also it is efficiently managed so uh, we have, we are a bit economical considering uh, the like the western market so uh, they are they are doing the like um, the, the they are submitting their documents to like asia based companies for, for the same and then uh, we are reuploading it to to them as, as per the prescribed format mm okay 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 uh, so now uh, now let's talk about uh the experiences you came from all the sectors uh, you uh, worked so far because uh, you have worked in a quite 
number of sectors. So could you please elaborate your experiences? What, what have you gained from all those uh, sectors, please? Yeah, um, to start with I, my first uh, like uh, career option and, and my first job was in research as a research executive for medical plastic data service. It's a company based at Ahmedabad and uh, they are doing research for the plastics uh, which are used in medical disposables. So I think uh, that is where like my initial initial time of uh, research executive or research assistant uh, started and then then uh, I get to know that uh, these are the different industry types in which uh, we can go and then like uh, slowly I, I uh, dived in deep into that and I get to know that industry is big what what we learned at like college that uh, we can either go to hospital or we can go to sales marketing or service or we can go to medical building or coding. So these are a very good options, but these are not the only options. There are n number of other options as well. And this particular, like uh, uh, this particular one, I didn't do before. So that mm -hmm. is something I learned after I graduated, and I get to know that industry is very big. And like I think uh, the more you explore, the more you get. So um, it's it's uh, like it started from there. The second job that I did uh, was for regulatory affairs, and uh, like uh, I did uh, the regulatory documentation for medical devices uh, to export to European and the US based market. So we need to comply to their their specific uh, like uh, their specific standards uh, uh, for CE marking and FDA marking. So uh, that is what uh, like we as a biomedical engineers were uh, like uh, role to to provide them. So I think that was also a good good uh, initiative and uh, I also learned a good amount of uh, regulatory uh, like uh, details in the standards uh, during my like the job there. And the third job that uh, I'm currently doing is uh, like of healthcare IT and which I think now like uh, my vision and also like uh, the, the details about what I'm, I'm looking is I think focused now. So I know that it is a it's, it will not see a downfall in less in next ten years or so. So I think oh, I it's the right place to be, and uh, I think, uh, and I know that it is uh, like it's we still haven't grown fully here. So I think it will not see a downfall for uh, like quite some time. So I think it's the right time to and the right place to be. So that is where I'm uh, I'm in, involved in the hospital IT sector for last four or four and a half years. That's really great. So it seems a huge hope is available there in healthy IT sector. Right. Okay, let's move on to the next topic we can talk about. Um, okay, uh, do you have any kind of specialties? I mean, from your company, does it have any kind of specialties? So um, our specialty is customized hospital software. So okay. uh, this is again the core of hospital uh, healthcare IT only. So we like currently all uh, different hospitals that have, have their own operational base, operational workflows in which they, they work or they want to work. So like we understand how different hospitals uh, work uh, like as per the management decisions or as per the, the operational types that they are performing or the specialities that they are having. And based on that, we like uh, create or like manufacture their own customized software so that uh, the software gives a traceability and a good vision that uh, what is actually going on in the hospital and the top management even the patients and all the staff of hospital can can track their activities so i think uh, that is what we are currently doing okay so it's a customized software is the specialty that we are working on and uh, it's a web based application so like, we do not need to it's not only installed at your laptop only, or it's not locally installed. So, mm -hmm. but also it is not a like a Android or iOS application. So it's a web-based mm -hmm. application that can be like uh, can be used at any like browser, browser-based application. And uh, I think uh, this this uh, this will be like uh, more and more web-based app <coughs> applications will be coming. Mm -hmm. So you provide your service based on the hospital's requirements, right? Yeah, yeah, that is that is critically right. And uh, as as they require, they, not all the hospitals will work in the same uh, workflow only. So they have their own operational management uh, going on. So mm -hmm. 
so we understand them for quite some time and then we customize our software and then if we do, when then we deliver to the hospital so that is what we are currently doing mm -hmm. okay okay 